Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Q and A. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was trying to make that all dramatic and everything, but it's just not happening. Anyway, everyone, thanks for dropping by. So, um, yeah, a few of you have been asking for a Q and A session for quite a while, and finally, I deliver. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I, I really can't make that dramatic. Um, big lesson in life, never take yourself too seriously. Um, first up, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are wonderful. Two and a half thousand people regularly drop by to listen to me. So my question to you is, what the hell is wrong with you people? Haven't you got anything better to do? <laughs> but seriously, 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 thank you so much. You know, I have a hell of a time doing this. I really enjoy making these videos, recording these narrations, telling these stories. And the fact that so many of you like what I do and drop by on a regular basis really means a lot to me. I love it. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. So um, let's take a look then. Uh, quite a few questions to get through and you've probably already gathered by now I am a lot less in control of myself when I don't have a script in front of me so I'm just going to waffle on and get through these as quickly or slowly as I can. Um, when I was putting them together I forgot to make a note of who'd asked so I'm sorry I'm just going to sort of put the questions up on the uh, on the video and answer them and if you answer if you're the one who asked Thank you. And I'm really sorry that I haven't put your name up on the screen. Okay, please leave a comment uh, in the comment section saying, yeah, that was me, he answered my question. Okay, I do appreciate it. And um, the longer you kind of follow my channel, the more you'll come to understand just how unbelievably disorganized and all over the place I really am. So I've already been waffling for like, I don't know how many minutes, and I haven't answered any of your questions yet. So let's get down to business. All right, question number one. Which creepypasta or a horror movie is your absolute favorite? As I work through these, you're going to be thinking, this guy is just a bit weird, you know, this is not a proper answer to this question, or this is not what, you know, a sane human being would say. And anyway, you know, I've really thought about these questions carefully, and I'm not going to be giving obvious answers. I'm going to be giving things that I've thought about and I will explain to you as we go along. So where are we? Yeah, question one. <laughs> How far are we into this? Oh, bloody, we're three minutes into this already. I haven't answered any questions. Okay. So this is my actual voice. Yes, this is what I sound like in real life. Um, as I've sort of given tidbits of information in the comments, I've, uh, I was born in England, spent some years there, some in the south of the country, some in the north. Then I moved to America, spent some time in America, and now I live in Istanbul. So my accent is uh, kind of all over the place. But the one I speak in when I do my narrations is pretty much how I speak in real life. And I still haven't answered question one, have I? Okay, here we go. So, favorite creepypasta, favorite horror movie? Okay, let's start with horror movie. Um, this is the absolute truth, and anyone who's seen this film will be like, what? on earth is he talking about? That's one of the worst horror films ever. My favorite is Halloween 3, The Season of the Witch. See, I told you you'd be like, you wouldn't understand at all. <laughs> um, widely regarded as one of the worst horror films uh, in the history of the world ever. Um, the one that was uh, supposed to launch Halloween as an anthology series and which was quickly sort of abandoned due to the general shockingly awfulness of Halloween 3. Um, I'll tell you why. I guess um, I was about, I don't know, what age is it when your parents suddenly say to you, OK, it's Saturday night. You know what? You can stay up late. You can stay up until this film has finished. There is that magical age. I think for me it was maybe 12 or 13. All of a sudden I'm like, oh, I get to stay up. And um, the horror film that was on on that particular night was Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. So um, 
it's shit. It's absolutely dreadful. I, I can't recommend strongly enough you don't take time out of your life to watch it. But for very sentimental reasons, my favourite horror movie is that. Because it was um, the one that sort of meant the end of childhood and the beginning of adulthood. And getting the trust of uh, mummy and daddy dear to let me stay up and watch a horror movie. Is that okay? Is that a good enough answer? Oh, and Creepy Pasta, uh, the Russian sleep experiment, because it was the first one I listened to, and it's still creepy as hell. Um, I had the pleasure of recording that very recently for Unit 522's channel. Um, I'll put a link somewhere. Um, please go and check out my version, because obviously it's the best one out there, even though it's been recorded <laughs> hundreds of times. Yeah, yeah, I get away with saying that, because this is my Q&A, all right? All right, question two. Bloody hell, I'm taking my time over this, aren't I? All right, this is a brilliant question. If you could meet anyone and share a meal with them, living or deceased, whom would you choose and what meal would you decide on? Okay, so my advice for anyone in this situation, not that it's ever going to happen, <laughs> choose somebody who you'll enjoy eating with. But also, we'll have you'll be you know have a bit of a laugh with them as well. For that reason, I am choosing the late great Douglas Adams. Uh, for those of you in my audience <laughs> who are too young to be familiar with um, the Hitchhiker, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books, go find them. Don't watch the film. The film was garbage. I think this film's about ten years old. Go and read the books. Um, it will change your perspective on life, the universe, and everything. Douglas Adams um, sadly died at the age of 52, I think, from cancer. Um, had a perspective on things which is all too rare among the human species. Um, it will open your mind to the greater um, beingness of the universe and give you some better idea of our place among everything out there. Okay, Douglas Adams. And of course, being a good guest, I would let him choose what he wanted, and I would order the same. Nice bottle of red wine to go with it, I think, as well. Question three. If you could teleport to any time period, which would you travel to? 1890s, London. Okay, I'm a bit of a fan of steampunk, to be honest with you. Um, I love the uh, designs. I love the whole ambience of that period in time. Um, it would probably be pretty disgusting and a bit grimy, and um, I might not survive cholera or something for very long, but nevertheless, I think, personally, that um, the turn of that century, 1890s up to the 1900s, was the absolute pinnacle of the human race and society. We were just beginning to make um, major scientific breakthroughs and build an industrial society and change the course of human civilization forever. And I would like to think at that point I could go back and make a difference and perhaps tilt the future direction of our species in the right direction because clearly something's gone a bit wrong since then and we're in a bit of trouble now but yeah um just p for style and for just um it's just damn cool isn't it really uh the 1890s in london okay i probably would have tried to catch jack the ripper as well while i was there next question where are we Number four who or what was your inspiration to start making these videos easy question um, young narrator by the name of Creeps McPasta. Um, one day I just, I just kind of stumbled across um, one of his narrations while surfing around on YouTube. And I thought, you know what? I could do this. I don't have much going for me in life. But, you know, I've got a pretty reasonable voice. And if I go down the throat a little bit, I can drop down an octave and do some pretty damn good things with my voice. <laughs> Sorry, I'm starting to, get, starting to get really into that. I should stop. Um, so yeah, Creeps McPasta. 
and I admire him. He does fantastic work. He's consistently um, delivering fantastic content and output at a phenomenal rate. But, okay, big confession time here. My big inspiration was, I thought I could do better than him. Okay, approximately one million people, <laughs> one million subscribers beg to differ. But anyway, that's a small detail, isn't it? Ooh. Now then, on to the big one. The big one. Will you ever do a face reveal? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I work in the education sector. And while it's not completely illegal or frowned upon for me to have this side hobby, um, it might not be too cool for me to sort of have this other persona alongside my education career. So for that reason, I'm not making a big sort of song and dance and saying, hey, look, it's me, here's my face. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do now is put a couple of pictures of me up from a few years ago. Now, I think I'm a bit safe because I don't look like this <laughs> anymore. Uh, the facial hair is gone, the haircuts are very different. I'm virtually unrecognizable, but just to try and satisfy your curiosity, here's a couple of pictures of me from a few years ago when I was uh, more handsome than I was than I am now and a bit scruffier. Okay, so for very good reasons, no, you won't be seeing me, um, my ugly mug, in my videos very often. Is that okay? Ah! <gasps> Oh my God, look at this next question. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Okay, please know that I'm blushing right now. Oh my God, <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever said that to me before. Um, okay, stop being silly. Ugh, I'm just a guy with a voice, all right? Who likes telling stories and I'm very happy that you're all here to listen to them. Oh, how many questions are we on now? Seven? Is that a seven? Is your singing voice as nice as your speaking voice? No, it's hideously grotesque. I cannot sing a note. Don't test me on this one. My singing is hideous. All right? Please, please, please believe me, and I'm not ever going to try and sing for you. Okay? So just stick to listening to me speaking stuff, all right? And be, you know, be satisfied with that. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Next one's a good one. What was your fondest childhood memory that wish you could go back and relive? Whew, hell of a question, that, isn't it? Now, I've given this one some thought. And like I said, um, you know, I'm going to be giving some odd responses from time to time. So, my fondest childhood memory. I'm going to take you back to a time when I was, it's about a quarter of a century ago, so I was like eight or nine. And we lived on a cul-de-sac, so uh, it was a pretty safe place. You know, kids were, a lot of kids my age, and we all went out playing on the street. And one day, um, I went back to my friend's house, and um, his friend's mum poured us a glass of cola each. And uh, this kid's father came in, um, looked very, very seriously at the glass of Coke in front of me. Uh, picked it up, poured it back into the bottle, and put the glass away. And that was a very pivotal moment. Now, I mean, do I call this a fond child memory? Yes, I do, because that was a moment when I saw that kindness was the way. Be kind to other people. Hopefully they will reciprocate, but that doesn't really have to affect your decision to be kind. This bastard of a man took a glass of Coke from in front of me, poured it back into the bottle, turned around and smiled at me because he didn't want to waste his, his bottle of cola, any of his cola on me. And if I could go back, um, I might uh, kick him in the balls, I might punch him in the face, or I might just say simply, thank you. No matter what happens to me in my life, I will never stoop as low as you just stooped right there, you disgusting man. Hmm. Okay, that was a bit deep, wasn't it? Let's just oh, 
take a deep breath and relax. So yeah, that was a fond childhood memory because it taught me a very important lesson. Don't be a bastard. It's just not worth it. Next question. Will you notice me, senpai? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, I'm an old bloke. Okay, well, I, as you can probably tell, I'm sort of um, to the north side of 30. So, yeah, this young speak, I don't know what it means. Senpai, what is this? Um, but what I think it means is, you know, hey, I'm somebody who's commenting on your video. Will you comment back? And those of you that drop by on a regular basis know that I will do my very best to, to answer every comment. And um, fantastically, my channel seems to be getting more and more popular. And I see some point in the future where it will be unmanageable to answer every single comment. Ha, huh, he says, all big-headedly. No, no, I'm not, seriously. But as long as I can, I will answer every comment and I will say hi if you've dropped by and been kind enough. Because, hey, you know, you were kind enough to listen to my narration and leave a comment. At the very least, I will try to acknowledge everybody that sort of comes and says hello. So, yeah, I did notice you senpai. Or am I senpai? Who's senpai? Am I even pronouncing that correctly? <laughs> How many of you have just unsubscribed after listening to that? <laughs> okay, next question. Two more questions left. I'm getting through this in a fairly reasonable time. How can I get a chance to work with you? Get in touch with me, okay? It's fun. I like working with other people. I like working with other narrators. I've had some fantastic opportunities from some very big channels already. And um, that's just how it works, okay? So uh, if you write a story and I like it, I'll read it. I'm not promising I will read your story. I get a lot of stories sent to me. And if you're a narrator, I will promise um, I will try and work with you. Please bear in mind, if you're a writer or another narrator, I'm unbelievably disorganized, forgetful, and um, I have the best intentions. And um, just keep nagging away, all right? I'll get around to you eventually. And give me time, okay? Give me time. Have you written? Okay, so <laughs> I'm on the last question, finally. And it's another good one. Have you written any stories yourself? If so, will you narrate any of them in the future? No, I haven't. <laughs> okay, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, when did I start doing this? Um, start of December last year, 2015, when I started doing this. And since then, I've been studying for my master's degree. And I'm trying to write a thesis of about twelve to 15,000 words. Hence, the lack of me writing any of my own stories. Okay, so it, it will happen in the future. I've got a lot of ideas going around in my head. I'm a bit of a zombie junkie, so they will be zombie-based. But it ain't happening right now, okay, for a very good reason. I've got about two months to um, cobble together my twelve to 15,000 word thesis. I'm getting there. I'm working hard. Don't worry. I'm not slacking off or anything. But I just don't have any time at the moment. Ooh, okay. That just about brings us to the end of this. Thank you so much. For coming and listening to me tonight and for coming by and listening to my stories please go and give a please accept that I'm giving your thanks to all of the writers of these stories you know they work really hard they put their heart and soul into creating these fine tales and that's why I try and put so much effort into making my narration as good and as heartfelt and as emotional and soulful as I possibly can. And I think you guys know that. And I think it comes through when I'm reading. Okay, I'm starting to get a bit too emotional here, aren't I? Let's call it a night. Thank you so much. And get all your friends to come by and subscribe. And we'll do this again when I reach another landmark. Should we say 5,000? That sounds good. If and when I get to 5,000, we'll do this again. So if I haven't answered anything that you want to know about me, let's get to 5,000 and you'll have another chance. Okay, another story coming along in a couple of days. 
I'll keep them coming thick and fast for you, because I know you love them. Okay, everyone, thank you, and goodbye. <laughs> I can't even do that. All right, goodbye.